the invitation. Uh, I'm the president of the Labor Council, which represents over 20,000 unionized workers in this region. And you might ask uh, what uh, unionized workers have to do with social assistance and social assistance reform. And my answer is that unions serve to represent our members' interests. That's what they pay dues for, for us to do. Uh, but primarily, we work for the betterment of all workers, of the 99% of our society. The austerity agenda of the Ontario government, and indeed of all governments since the 2008 financial meltdown, is an attack on all working people. The attack on unions through Bill 115, and the attack on social assistance rates through cuts to the special diet allowance, the discretionary benefits, the community startup, the maintenance benefit, are all part of the same austerity agenda that we need to resist together. The labor movement recognizes that social assistance rates are a problem for everyone, not just those who are forced to rely on orders of your own Low welfare rates keep uh, wages down for, for all working people. When a single adult makes only $600 a month on OW, that means that an employer can offer a pretty paltry wage and still pay the person more than she makes on welfare. Most discussion of the uh, of social assistance fails to discuss the fact that most people in Ontario works for ODSP are there through no fault of their own. They don't want to be on welfare. They're there because they're part of the 60% of Canada's unemployed that don't qualify for EI. Or they're there because they're new immigrants or refugees who don't have the language skill, skills yet to be hired into the jobs that they're, they're qualified for. They're there because they have an addiction or a mental health condition or some ailment that makes them hard to hold down a job. Every time I hear stories about people gaining the welfare system, I want to cry out, red herring. The cheaters are such a small percentage of the, of the people on the system. And let's face it. The welfare cheaters are such an insignificant issue when compared to the cheaters who crashed our whole economy by giving people mortgages that they couldn't afford and then selling those bad mortgages as AAA ratings uh, investments to, to investors. Or let's talk about the cheaters who are being paid in taxes by shifting their profits to foreign countries where they don't even do business, but where the governments charge much less tax. Let's put this whole situation to a bit of perspective. I mentioned the uh, employment insurance. Every employed worker and their employer um, pay, pays into, into the EI system. But since the mid-90s, $57 billion more has been paid into the system than has been paid out to people who are actually unemployed. That's, be that's partly because in 1996, the maximum benefit you could make on EI was $604 a week. Now it's $435. It's also because the qualification rules have been tightened up so that now only 40% of the people who are unemployed can actually qualify for EI. So part of the solution of the problem that the SARC report purports to, to uh, be addressing has to lie in reforming the EI system so that more people who are unemployed can actually receive uh, the benefits from the system that they paid into when they were working. The SARC commissioners were given a mandate to make conditions <clears throat> make recommendations for Ontario's welfare system under similar conditions that the Drummond Commission was, was, was given. And that, that is, um, come up with changes to the system, but don't recommend anything uh, that requires more money to be spent. <clears throat> and this condition very much limits the possibilities for real change. And it's not necessary. The government's, the Ontario government spending is not out of control. We're spending less per capita on social programs than all other provinces in Canada, as the Falling Behind report uh, demonstrated uh, to us last year. We have a revenue problem in Ontario, not a spending problem. We're not bringing in enough taxes, and that's because we're not taxing corporations and those can who can afford to pay more, not. So I'm under where the vision is of, of the SARC report. Why should commissioners just accept that the economy is what it is, that the amount of funding available for social assistance is what it is, and, and, and work from there to, to design the system. We need to broaden the conversation to include what the basic standard of living on social assistance should be and how to gain the government revenues to pay for that. I want to just finish by uh, reiterating what Poverty Free Water Region said to the SARC, SARC Commission when they had a chance to talk to the commissioners. They felt the two biggest issues needed to be dealt with in social assistance reform were one, benefit levels that were adequate enough, adequate enough to live a healthy life, and two, that people in the system are treated with dignity and respect. I wholeheartedly agree and feel that the SARC report failed to deliver on both, both fronts.
we need to, we need to build a coalition of people that, that uh, agree with that. And uh, I hope many of you will, will join in uh, the demonstration in, in uh, tomorrow next week uh, on Saturday. There's sign-up lists for buses that are leaving from Kitchener that are sponsored by the Labor Council.